Hello and welcome to Volusia Magazine. I'm Amber Osman. In this week's episode, the county begins a campaign to construct a veterans plaza. Then the library kicks off its Health Happens in Libraries programming. And her name is Rio and she's headed back to sea. Plus, Joanne Magley talks with Connie Bernal from the UCF Business Incubator. Those segments and more coming right up on Volusia Magazine. I hope you stay tuned. As the deconstruction of the existing drawbridge continues to make way for the new Tom Stead Veterans Memorial Bridge in Daytona Beach, the Volusia County Council unanimously agreed to establish a Veterans Memorial Fund at its September 22nd meeting. Donations to the fund will be used to construct a $1.2 million Veterans Memorial Plaza, which will be built on the northwest side of the bridge. Donations will be held in escrow by the county for five years, at which time the county will construct as much of the proposed plaza as donations permit. Uh, but I, I drove over that bridge every day to work, so every day I would pass it was a Veterans Memorial Bridge as well, even though I always knew it was an Orange Avenue Bridge. It wasn't really decorated in the sense that you had the feeling of, of what it truly was. Uh, so we're in a council meeting and I pitched the idea, hey, what if we had these overlooks? And what if we did this? And what if we did this grand, grand memorial? Uh, and my idea behind it was, let's do a memorial that's also a bridge, not let's do a bridge that's a memorial. A little different than what people usually do for these types of projects. Uh, we created a, a citizen committee uh, that were veterans, which was very important, obviously, to have them on there. They were excellent, very, very, the, to the veterans that, um, that were involved, they really spent a lot of time, as well as the rest of the committee. Um, citizens that live in that area, uh, and then community members just uh, did some diversity to make sure we had uh, everyone involved to be a part of it. The new Tomstead Veterans Memorial Bridge is a high-level, multi-arch concrete structure that will be handicap accessible and will include an eight-foot sidewalk and fishing piers on both sides of the Halifax River. The highlight of the bridge is the military recognition that it includes. Those are plaques at 28 scenic overlooks commemorating conflicts in America's military history. These plaques will include descriptions of the conflicts and the outcomes, the number of killed, wounded, or missing in action, a QR code linked to additional data, and a braille plate with information. It's a place for reflection. I think a lot of people will come there for that. Uh, it's a place that will be respectful to pay your respects um, as a memory for those that have given all. This is one of those times where it's, you're not raising money for, for political or running for office. You're raising money for something that is uh, really a community asset and a memorial that is needed. Uh, and I think that people are, are glad to support it. To make a donation to help fund the creation of the Veterans Memorial Plaza, you can contact Volusia County Accounting at 386-736-5933 or send a check made payable to Volusia County, 123 West Indiana Avenue, DeLand, Florida, 32720 and note on the check, Veterans Memorial Donation. For more information about the Veterans Memorial Plaza and to view bridge construction progress photos, you can visit volusia.org slash Veterans Memorial Bridge. Staff at the Marine Science Center in Ponce Inlet are celebrating the successful release of a large female loggerhead sea turtle they rehabilitated at their turtle hospital. Her name is Rio and she arrived at the Marine Science Center July 6th after being discovered stranded on the beach for several hours, possibly in an attempt to nest. The large 253 pound female turtle was immune compromised. She was anemic, she was underweight and deficient in calcium and other nutrients that would allow for successful egg production and laying of eggs. Yes, we're so excited to be able to get Rio back out there because as a breeding age female, we know that that turtle will hopefully, now that she's regained her strength, be able to come right back up to the beaches and lay some eggs and keep the species going. After rescue and initial assessment at the Brevard Zoo Sea Turtle Healing Center, Rio was sent to the Marine Science Center's Turtle Hospital for further treatment. 
Upon arrival at the hospital, Rio began a treatment plan including antibiotics to prevent further infection. She got iron and vitamin injections as well as fluids with calcium, potassium and other electrolytes. The turtle also was started on a highly nutritious diet including live blue crabs to make sure she was able to forage for food. Rio has gained quite a bit of weight and is estimated to weigh close to 275 pounds. Rio's return to the ocean was a huge collaboration between multiple organizations and lots of volunteers and time and, and man hour, literally physical labor, getting that turtle out here. Uh, we're so excited to be part of getting this turtle back out there where she belongs and we're so thankful for everybody who played a part in helping us get her to this point where we could get her back out. As a reminder, we are in the nest hatching phase of our sea turtle nesting season. To date, we have more than 673 sea turtle nests on our Volusia beaches. To learn more about our sea turtles, consider a visit to the Marine Science Center, which is open to the public. Visitors may view the turtle hospital and walk through a marine display area and the Seabird Rehabilitation Center from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday and noon to 4 p.m. on Sundays. The Marine Science Center is located at 100 Lighthouse Drive in Ponce Inlet. For more information, visit marinesciencecenter.com or call 386-304-5545. The Volusia County Library System has more than just books. Here's a look at upcoming programs at our branches. For more library events, visit volusialibrary.org. They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Do you have a million dollar idea, but you don't know where to start? Well, you're in luck. Several local organizations are joining forces to help anyone who's ready to add entrepreneur to their title. Kate Sark has the details in this week's Volusia Business Beat. Did you know that this is the first time in history where there are five generations with whom we have the potential to interact with? As a business person, this can be quite a challenge as different generations communicate differently, have different sets of values, and understand business differently. Thankfully for business owners, that's where organizations like SCORE come in. SCORE, a national organization developed by the Small Business Administration, helps individuals aspiring to start and grow their business. The local chapter, SCORE 87, has been in existence since 1965 and serves Volusia and Flagler counties. Through volunteers and sponsors, SCORE is able to provide many free services to business owners looking for a little guidance. We put on workshops, uh, typically two or three a month, covering the basic areas of small business management, the purpose of which is to help our clients develop basic skills with respect to how to manage their business. And thirdly, we have a number of online tools that are available as well on our website. SCORE volunteers aren't consultants, they're mentors, and the goal is to help a person develop as a business person as well as develop their business. SCORE recognizes that while their program offers a wealth of resources for businesses, 
By partnering with other local organizations, they're able to offer even more to their clients. One of those organizations is Bethune-Cookman University. SEED is considered to be in the center of uh, uh, entrepreneurship and economic development. And over the period of time, what we have done is that we have we are concerned our interest in the economic development and development people to actually help in developing economics in the area. And uh, one of the things that we found out is that we have some uh, resource right in our backyard here, and which is SCORE. Not only do SCORE and BCU work together to provide knowledge to students, they've worked together on events and opportunities to benefit local businesses. SCORE and BCU, recognizing the importance of entrepreneurship, partnered to bring their resources to both startups and existing businesses. A few years back, the two organizations, in conjunction with the Small Business Administration of North Florida, hosted a free entrepreneurship certificate program, which aimed to help current small business owners or those who wish to start their own businesses turn their ideas into reality. Classes were taught by BCU professors and included lessons on how to write a business plan, how to succeed in marketing and sales, and how to manage finances. With 42 local community members completing the two and a half month program, BCU and SCORE felt confident that they needed to continue offering educational opportunities for local entrepreneurs. Recently, the two organizations came together again to host BizFest. BizFest was designed for aspiring entrepreneurs, small business owners, and the payoff actually for the attendance was learning, a bit of networking, and some fun. We have panels going on addressing subjects such as how to be an entrepreneur, social media. We had round tables addressing insurance needs and health needs uh, for small businesses. And we've had two keynote addresses, one of which dealt with professionalism in the work environment and a second with how you market to multi-generational groups. The event culminated with PitchFest, a contest similar to Shark Tank, in which aspiring and existing businesses competed for not only the title of winner, but prize money to invest in their company as well. Hellman emphasized that what's unique about events such as BizFest is the diversity of participants. By bringing together students, startups, and established businesses, attendees were offered the opportunity to network with a wide range of individuals. If you weren't able to attend this year's BizFest, don't worry. SCORE and BCU aim to continue working together to provide learning opportunities to the community. This was our first year and we've got a great learning experience going on. We will sit down in the next couple of weeks and examine what we thought went well and what can be improved. And then we'll decide how to move forward. If you'd like to learn more about Bethune-Cookman University, visit cookman.edu. For more information about SCORE services, or if you're interested in becoming a mentor, visit score87.org. For The Business Beat, I'm Kate Sark. You know, a healthy lifestyle doesn't always mean drastic changes, but often smaller adjustments. Just stop by your local Volusia Library branch and get started on the road to a healthier you. The Volusia County Public Library System is celebrating Health Happens in Libraries Month with a series of free programs that offer health and wellness tips, yoga classes, and information about common diseases of the elderly. People seek out the libraries when they need information, and that's a great thing. We have all different kinds of information. Um, October, we're, spit, we're sharing the healthy information, everything from books and DVDs and movies, um, articles and newspapers, uh, everything to help our patrons be more healthy. Uh, all kinds of healthy things, healthy living, healthy exercise, healthy lifestyles, how to be healthy, and programming is about some different conditions and diseases that affect our populations. I think each one of us in, inside decides that we can always do something better, improve ourselves, and this is a great way for us to start looking for that extra little thing we can do to make ourselves healthier, make our friends and family healthier, and just get the word out that they can find that information if they don't know about it at the library. From Alzheimer's disease to the Zika virus, the libraries are offering more than 40 programs that focus on wellness this month. For a list of upcoming health programs, you can visit volusia.org slash health happens. 
The pet vet cruiser will be out and about here in Volusia County, offering low-cost spaying and neutering services to financially eligible owners of dogs and cats in unincorporated areas and in the cities of DeLand and South Daytona. Here are the dates and locations of the mobile clinic this month. Service fees are based on income and appointments are required. These may be made by calling one of the following local numbers. Here's a look at some events happening around Volusia County. For more events and county news, visit volusia.org. It's time to head into the studio and join the Director of Community Information, Joanne Magley, and her guest, the Site Manager for the UCF Business Incubator at the Daytona Beach International Airport, Connie Bernal. Thanks, Amber. Well, business expansion is arguably one of the most important elements of economic development. The UCF Incubator at Daytona Beach International Airport helps to grow and nurture young, promising companies and take that next step. So with us today in the studio is Connie Bernal, the site manager for the UCF Business Incubator at Daytona Beach International Airport. Hi, Connie. Hi. How are you? Good, thanks for being here. Good to see you again. Thank you so much. So let's start with some basic information, some background information for those people who aren't familiar with the incubator at Daytona Beach International Airport, mm -hmm. give, us, give us an overview. The UCF Business Incubator is a resource for entrepreneurs and business owners to start, grow, and make a company very successful in the future. It's not a building, it's a process that they have to follow. And it happens that we have a nice building, thanks to Volusia County, uh, they provide an 11,000 square footage building. We have 21 offices. So the entrepreneur has an office and then has all the resources we have available for them. And they just go with their computer and they can start their companies without any problem. So what is the incubation process like for these young companies? What can mm -hmm. they expect when they come in um, of the services that are, that are provided? Well, what we are looking for is for entrepreneurs with a great idea, idea that can become a multi-million dollars company in the future. And the process starts with a basic um, in interview. So in the interview, I kind of ask questions uh, related to customers, related to where are they going to find the money to grow the company. And when I see they have potential, then they go to a class in Orlando. At the end of the class, actually, they present to a group of investors or sometimes business uh, owners. And they are the ones who say, yes, this is a good fit for the incubation program. And then we start with a series of um, strategic meetings with the entrepreneur. And what they do is they kind of tell the story. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to become. And then we do the business model, Canvas. We help them with uh, connections, with a lot of resources available in Central Florida. And then little by little, this company is growing. And when they need to hire people, we reach out to universities. We reach out to interns and we reach out to business community and then partner and that's how they grow these companies. Sometimes they take like uh, three years mm -hmm. or maybe five years. It depends on the industries. Tell us a little bit about one or two of the clients that are there right now and the businesses that they are 
trying to grow? Mm -hmm. Well, we have 15, so one of the companies that I'm always proud is a faculty from Embry-Riddle. And Dr. Bogdan, he has an amazing idea, which is to go to the space and clean from the debris. So he's working on a little robot that's going to the space and it's gonna help actually the whole world to get the garbage that is out there. Okay, so space junk basically. Yes, so he has that going on. And the beauty of his idea is he can reach out to federal grants. So we apply with him to a grant that is called the Small Business Innovation Research Grant. And he was able to have phase one. That means that he got like $150,000 mm -hmm. to continue doing research. And that leads to a $2 million grant from the federal government to make that idea a reality. So we are always kind of very proud of what he's doing, always training him, helping him in how to get this grant. And remember, these are money from the federal government that is coming into Alicia County. And with that new money, comes to our county, economic growth sure. happens. He hired local people to continue doing the research, and hopefully that will be a, a huge company in the future. But those kind of companies usually take like seven to 10 years mm. because it's a lot of research at mm -hmm. the beginning. So now another company that we have is, um, is an app um, developer, and the name is um, Campus Scientific. He has several, uh, initiatives. He has a security app for college and universities. He has a program for middle school kids and teach them how to code. It's called My School Tech Hub. And he's starting another initiative, another enterprise that is going to be very interesting to see. And these app companies or e-commerce type of businesses usually take only like a couple of years to grow and be successful. So that's kind of the mix we have at the incubator. Yeah, and you mentioned coding and that this particular <clears throat> client is working on coding. You've also formed a partnership with the school system specifically about coding. Um, why is it so important to reach out to the students and, um, and why are you reaching out to them? Well, one of the things that we have learned during this process, especially when the companies are growing, is they got to the point that they have to hire people, especially if these uh, e-commerce type of companies, they have to hire coders, they have to hire developers. And it was a point that we couldn't find anybody with that talent here in town. So I was going to Orlando area to find coders mm -hmm. and developers, and then they were hired by the companies, and I felt so bad, because our job is to help companies to hire locals. Right. So that way, we help the interior clients to grow, and we help the economic growth that the county is looking for. So I say, I don't want to do this anymore. We need to do something about it. So we start an initiative that is called Volusia Tech Hub. So the Volusia Tech Hub uh, program has classes for job seekers and little kids in coding and rapid prototyping. So we have partnered with a career source, Robin King, and she decided to pay the instructors for the classes. So at the beginning of this year, we trained almost 30 job seekers in coding and wow. rapid prototype. And uh, three of the coders were hired by the incubator clients. Mm. And now the reason we're reaching out to little kids is because of the internet of things. So we need to start teaching the little kids coding, we need to teach them computer science because we live in an information technology right. era. Right. So it's all about the internet of things, it's all about uh, starting a company online. You know, the beauty of what's going on today with the 
Internet of Things is that you can start a trillion dollars company in your dorm. But that's kind of the beauty of the Internet of Things, that you can start something here. You don't need to go to Silicon Valley. Right. You don't need to go to New York. You don't need to go anywhere. The only thing you need to know is how to build the app, how to build that game, or how to build that e-commerce company in your hometown, right. in your house, or in the incubation program. That's why reaching out the little kids, and maybe we want them to stop playing with the games. We want them to start making the games. Right, right. So, what else? Um, what are some other new programs uh, from the last time you and I spoke? So we have the coding classes, the Maker Lab classes. We actually uh, have a Maker Space right now. And we have 3D printers. We have um, um, little um, machines that will help kids or um, entrepreneurs to do their own prototypes. So now they can do their prototypes in-house. And these programs are open to the public, um, some of them with fees, some of them without fees, but you don't mm -hmm. have to be an incubator client for these additional programs. Exactly. So anyone can uh, take our coding classes. Anyone can take all the training events that we have at the incubator. and. Now, since we're reaching out to middle schools or to the YMCA, they can, we just partner with uh, the companies or the institutions that want to train their kids or their um, employees in coding and rapid prototyping. So Connie, how can people get more information for, um, to find out how to either be an incubator client or to participate in the program? So well, they, we have a website, uh, it's www.incubator.ucf.edu, or they can call us at 386-872-3100. All right, well, Connie Bernal, the site manager for the UCF Business Incubator at Daytona Beach International Airport. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Amber, back to you. Thanks, Joanne, and thank you for watching Volusia Magazine. If you have any questions about the show, you can feel free to give us a call at any of the numbers you see listed here, or you can log on to volusia.org and click on the News tab at the top of the screen to find us. Incidentally, you can find the County Council's meeting calendar there, too. In fact, you can use volusia.org to find out about meeting dates, workshops, topics of interest, activities, and how you can become involved. And we hope you won't forget to listen to Volusia Today. That's Volusia County Government's weekly public radio broadcast. Volusia Today airs every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sunday mornings on the local radio stations you see on your screen. For Volusia Magazine, I'm Amber Osmond. Have a wonderful evening.